After spending four amazing days of wheeling in Moab, Utah, our team turned our rigs west and headed for the hills of Colorado. And in this episode, we are going to tackle the scenic trail of Ophir Pass and then the hair-raising switchbacks of the famous Black Bear Pass. Stay tuned. Guys, we are on day five of our Utah, Colorado expedition. We left Moab this morning, and that was tough to do because we had some great off-roading in Moab, and it was just a beautiful place. But I will tell you, the three-hour drive from Moab to Ure, man, it was spectacular. The views around every corner were just awesome. Uh, we ended up in Ure. A couple of the guys are staying in hotels. Marco and I will be looking for a campsite, a primitive campsite here tonight. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go check out the Ophir trail it's you know mid-afternoon so we want to do something kind of short so this should be a pretty moderate trail but we should get some spectacular views guys let's go check this out Ophir Pass is located approximately 22 miles south of Ure right off of the million dollar highway but because it's a slow, windy mountain road to get to the trailhead, it's going to take you at least an hour if you're coming from that direction. Now, Ophir Pass is just over 10 miles long, and it will take you about two hours to complete. This trail is rated as easy, and while there are no major obstacles along the way, there is a section of rocky shelf road that requires your attention. Just about any stock high clearance 4x4 vehicle should be able to make this trail just fine. The trail takes you along the San Juan mountain range to the mining town of Ophir that was established back in 1881 and you will be rewarded with some awesome views along the way. As we were making our way to the top of the mountain, I was in position for a great shot with the Jeeps making the summit. Well, that's what I thought. Yep, that just happened, but come on. It was a nice save. I didn't even drop the camera. It's a pretty short drive to the summit, which is located about four miles in, and you reach a peak of 11,789 feet you're pretty much surrounded by some chunks of broken granite here. Not a whole lot of views, but going down the backside of Ophir Pass presents some awesome views the whole way, and the terrain changed to a more rocky terrain. Just use a little caution navigating your way down the mountainside. This is just one of many old mining ruins you will find on the trails here in Colorado. I'll bet there's an interesting story behind this old truck.
the backside of Ophir Pass takes you through a small neighborhood and then ends up at some really cool abandoned old buildings just on the edge of Howard Fort Creek. So guys, we just finished up Ophir Pass and let me say uh, for the break-in trail, for being here in Colorado, that was perfect. You know, it was a nice easy trail the whole way, nothing crazy, but definitely some ledges on the side. So if you're scared of heights, you definitely want to slow down and take your time. But man, the scenery was amazing. And it, and it changed, you know, at one part it was just granite rocks, then it was some grassy hills and then some forest and just spectacular views going up and down. Now, there is another section of this trail you can do. It's called Alta Lakes. It's a couple more miles. If you want to complete that, you can. Uh, we're a little short on time, so we got to go find a place to camp. So we're going to do that. We got to go find a place to camp tonight. It was a bit of a drive back to Ure, and it took Marco, my son, and I a little while to find the perfect camp spot that would keep us within a short drive to the Black Bear Pass trailhead. We found a great little spot inside this Mineral Creek staging area for off-road vehicles. It was away from everyone, and it was perfect. And there was no doubt we were up in the mountains because compared to the heat of Moab we just left, we were pretty chilly and thankful we brought some warm clothes. Oh, and one thing to mention, there are actually black bears up here, so secure your food and trash. Well, the day has finally come. I've been wanting to do Black Bear Pass for a long time, but I have to admit, I have a moderate fear of heights. So I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little apprehensive about the cliffs that were to come in our future today. The Black Bear Trailhead is located 13 miles south of Ure, right off the Million Dollar Highway. And this is a very popular trail, so you can expect to see many folks staging up here. This group here headed out right before us and had some really nicely built Toyotas in their caravan. Black Bear Pass is almost 10 miles long in length and will take you around three hours to complete depending on how many times you decide to stop along the way. And it is rated as moderate. And while you are not doing any serious rock crawling on this trail, your ability to navigate some steep descents and some sharp switchback corners will require your full attention. And it's also a good idea to check with the ranger station before heading out on this trail because it's often closed during inclement weather conditions. Now, let's go conquer this bad boy. After a few miles in, we reach the summit at 12,840 feet, and there is nothing but magnificent views in all directions here. We had to stop and just take a few photos. This was a spot we didn't want to forget because it was beautiful up here.
our drive down the back side of the mountain was pretty mild up until this point. But now, with Telluride in our sights just up ahead, the trail began presenting us with a few fun little obstacles, and we all knew the switchbacks were just up ahead. And oh, look, uh, we were like a bunch of little kids every time we saw an old mine or a mining artifact the entire time we were in Colorado. You just gotta stop and check this kind of stuff out. I love it. We had finally reached the top of the switchbacks, and here is where my situational awareness perked up. Now, I want to say this. The trail going down is not super difficult, but when you have a very narrow trail with a thousand foot drop down the side, it does play with your mind a little. But look, several folks every day make it down this trail with no problem. This is all about taking your time, going slow, choosing your line, and having a good spotter. The first section here is a little easier than it looks. You do drop down a few rocky ledges and the tires are going to slip a little, but as long as you take it very slow, I recommend four low and first gear, and stay to passenger, you'll be fine. But you are looking straight over the ledge at Telluride here. It's an amazing view, but probably best to keep your eyes on the trail through this section. The first switchback allows you plenty of room to make a three-point turn, and as soon as you do make the turn, you are greeted with the ruins from an old mine, and this is probably one of the best spots you could ask for to stop for lunch. I mean, come on, a gorgeous waterfall and incredible views of the town below? Yeah, this is it. This is what it's about. After a nice break, it was time to press on. Crossing this little stream is easy enough, but now your tires are wet and you have to crawl over a slab of granite just on the other side. And I think just about everybody in our group slid a little bit to passenger as they were going over the granite slab. You have more room than you think, but that sliding feeling towards the ledge, well, 
it doesn't really give you a very warm fuzzy, if you know what I mean. But no problem here. We all made it across. Easy day. Slow and steady. That's the way to go, guys. Right, nicely done, buddy. Nicely done. Right at my right is a big piece of metal sticking out of the ground. Copy that. Just stay in the middle, kind of go slow. Don't hit that one rock that like I just hit and bounce you down the hillside. Yeah, copy that. The edge is dangerous and the hillside to your left is dangerous. The next switchback you will encounter is the tightest and sharpest of all the ones you will navigate on your way down. It's a good idea to have a spotter here and if you have a four-door Jeep or a long wheelbase vehicle, doing a four or even a five-point turn here might be required. Nice and slow, take it easy. This is not a difficult turn, you just got to take your time. Don't hit that rock like you did.
You don't want to sleepwalk around that house. Yeah. Alright guys, we finished Black Bear Pass and what an epic trail. I mean, the views the entire way were amazing. And it's definitely a technical trail. You need to be in four low first gear and take your time and watch your lines very carefully. Having a good spotter is really, really essential. I don't know that I want to come back and do this again. It's a great trail, but I think it's a check in the block and done. And now I'm going to go explore some new ones. So we're going to go grab some lunch and tell your ride. And then we're going to go hit Imogene Pass.